Hi! Today I want to show you how you can create a fully native Splite.js slider in Wist and Webflow that works with the data coming from your database. So let's get right started with the Webflow setup. So first of all, we have a holder. So the holder is just simply holding our Splite.js item before it gets initialized based on their SDK. So we're just going to set the same fixed height as our Splite.js item has for that holder. And we're going to apply the combo class of skeleton loader on top of that. We have some code in here that will look for the combo class of skeleton loader and animate it with our skeleton animation. So the moment the request on the WIS side finishes, we're going to remove the skeleton loader class because the Splite JS slider was initialized so that we don't have any animation going on in the background and per causing performance issues or draining the user's battery. And yeah, so initially we want to add that on there because we want to have that working from the first setup. And now let's go back to actually one thing I forgot to mention is you need to add this the attribute of WIST skeleton on here so that we can target this element in WIST and then remove the class once the condition is met. So once the request has finished. Perfect. And now let's go to the splite instance. It is very important that we class name those splite items one to one as their documentation recommends us to do so that everything works because splite is targeting their um, elements and their interactivity based on your class name. So we got to name this splite and inside of the splite, we're going to add the splite underscore underscore track. This will be basically what will hold our list. And then we have the splite underscore underscore list with a left alignment. Um, you can align it however you want though. And we just have the splite underscore underscore list class applied to it. Therefore, splite will be able to identify this element. And now we're just going to in here at our splite slide. If you want a static uh, carousel, a static slider, you would just add multiple of those. But in our case, we want it fully dynamically. So we're just going to add one as the template item. And in this template item, we're going to apply a WIST attribute of slide item. This attribute will be then used in WIST to render those items dynamically that will populate our slider. And then in the, in the slide item, we just have the content holder that will hold the heading. So we're going to add the WIST attribute of WIST slide heading in there so that we can set the text for this heading in the slide. And we're going to add in the paragraph, the WIST attribute of slide paragraph so that we can set the paragraph dynamically in this slide. And we're going to do the same thing for the image. We're just going to have the image in here. We're going to use the custom component for IMG and we're going to apply an inline styling of a width of 100% and a height of auto. And we're going to add the width attribute of slide image in here so that we can set the image within WIST for this dynamic slide item. And in here, we have just a normal button as a custom element. So it's a real button in Webflow with the ID of previous. So we're going to target this to go one step back. And we have another button in here with the ID of next. So we're going to go one step ahead. And this is the whole canvas setup in Webflow. And let's go to some side code in here. So we're just going to add the style sheet, the CSS class from their library from Splite.js, as well as their JavaScript library in the body. And then we're just going to add um, some CSS styling for the Splite item to start at an opacity of zero so that when the slider is not initialized yet, it will be invisible so that we're going to see 
the skeleton loader behind it. And once it is initialized, we just have it gradually fade in using some jQuery. And then even what well, after that happened, we just remove the skeleton loader in the background um, to not cause any performance issues later on um, because we don't need this to run in the background even though this is already loaded because it will just layer over it and you won't see that anyway. So we can save that uh, power in just killing that animation. And this is how we're going to use this little bit of CSS code. And yeah, that was the whole Webflow setup. And let's go to WIST. So first of all, we have to connect this with our base URL. In this case, we're just going to take Xano as our REST API example, but it works with any REST API and any real-time API as well, such as Superbase or Firebase. And now we're just going to set up a request, just a simple GET request to our endpoint extension to get the data for the slider right in here. Now we want to trigger the slider animation on page uh, finishes loading, so on page load. So we're going to add an event-based action, page finishes loading, to perform the request to get our slides. Like this, we're now going to call the API on page load, and then we're going to work with that data. Now, as the next part is, once we got that data, we need to take the slide items, those ones right here, and we need to render a list of them. So we're going to use the render list action and we're going to base this off the list that the API returned us. And we're going to add the V iterator on there so that we can have this work with our dynamic data. Perfect. And now we're just going to simply um, set the content inside the list item. So we're going to go to an element based action. We're going to set the heading and we're going to go to set text, plain text, and we're going to go, let's really quick go in here. We want this heading to be set. So we're going to do r.slides.data. We're going to take the V iterator so that it is fully dynamically. And we're going to add dot heading because we want to set the heading. And we're doing the same principle for our slide paragraph for set text, plain text, and we're doing the same thing just in this case for dot paragraph, like this. And we're going to set the paragraph in here. Oh, I didn't know they even support drag. And look at that. Isn't that amazing? Wow, it's, it's a great tool. Look at that. And even keyboard shortcuts. Wow, perfect. So now let's set the image. So we're just going to go to the image. We're going to do an element based action. We're going to apply this to the image, which we targeted by the attribute. And we're going to set a dynamic attribute on top of the image. If you're familiar with the Webflow custom component, you know that you can set custom attributes in here. For example, if I were to set a source attribute in this image, let's take this link real quick. If I were to set the source attribute for this image in Webflow like this, um, you would see the image. But we want WIS to do this dynamically because we don't want to have static images into our um, slider. So we're going to go to the set HTML attribute, which is exactly the same we just did manually in Webflow, but this time we'll have with do the magic for us to do this computed. So we're going to go to SRC for source, like we did in Webflow, but we're going to add, instead of a, a static URL in Webflow, we're going to base this on the request we're going to get back from our API, and we're going to put our image, our dot image dot URL from right here, dynamically using the v dot iterator, which always gets the dynamic iteration um, of the current list item. So for one, it gets the image one. For two, it gets image two. For three, it gets image three, and so on. So we're always getting the current state, a bit like uh, a Webflow CMS collection once you apply it to the 
CSS CMS class. So it doesn't say heading for everything. It says heading one, heading two, heading three, and so on. So this is why we're going to use the iterator for this and everything else in our render list actions in WIST. And now when the page starts loading, we want to initialize a base setup of Splite. So we're just calling the base setup of Splite using their SDK. And the small difference is, is we're going to configure this in a WIST variable. So we're going to create a WIST variable called uh, v.splite underscore JS. It's just an empty variable, just a basic empty variable like here. Nothing in here, not computed. It's just a basic variable just so that we have something in which we can initialize, oh, in which we can initialize our splite setup. So now once this is set up, we're just simply going to add new splite. We're going to target this on the dot splite element. We're going to do the mount. So we have the splite uh, animation mounted on there and we're going to define our custom buttons to go a step ahead and a step back and all of that so that those work too. And once that is working, we need to stop once the whole slider is initialized and the content is in here. We want to do when the request finishes an event based action that when the slides request finishes, we now want to remove this animation I talked about earlier with the CSS slider because we don't want this to go on in the background. So we're just going to do a run function. We're going to call jQuery, which is our powerful tool that helps us write easier JavaScript that actually is humanly understandable. So we're going to target the data attribute of with skeleton, which we have right in here, in here with with skeleton, we're going to target this element and our code right now is doing exactly this. Watch, it's clicking delete and removing the class. Let's do this again. Oh, I just exposed myself. Yes, I secretly use ChatGBT to write code. I admit it. <laughs> and if I click on here again, skeleton loader, it will remove the skeleton loader animation. And this is exactly what this code of dot remove class targeted to skeleton loader is doing. It's removing that. So nothing is going on in the background, which we don't need necessarily. And now after all of that happened, we, if we were not to do this action right here, let me really quick show you what will happen. Because once the dynamic data is loaded into our predefined canvas for the splite JS, we need to reinitialize splite JS, by the way, using the variable in which we have to find the splite JS SDK. So if I were not, to, if, if I wouldn't do that, it would just not slide. It wouldn't splite, you know, splite isn't sliding here. It would just somehow very oddly work with drag and drop and not really. You see, so we need to refresh Splite once we put dynamic content in it. So it works perfectly, as you can see right here. Look at that. And it even works, works with my mouse. And I can be as fast as I want, basically. It will work miraculously. And I can even do all those exciting features. So we need to reinitialize it. And after we reinitialize it, we have this fade in animation. Remember, the initial state is at opacity zero. Using the CSS code, we have added right in here in the head of our page. So we're just going to do jQuery dollar sign, and we're going to target dot splite, which is targeting dot splite in here too. And we're going to move the opacity from zero to dot CSS opacity to one. And the fade in animation that it will just be very gradually that will just come from the transition which we have to find in here. So we're just going to set this. And the nice thing about jQuery is it recognizes that because this is tied to the request finishes action, it will not set the opacity back to zero and have it fade in if I reload the request, but it will still reinitialize the whole splider setup so that no matter how often I try to reinitialize this whole splider, 
it will still slide, but just have any potential new slides included into it to offer a wonderful dynamic experience. And yeah, this is how you're going to set up a Splite.js slider in Wist and Webflow that works fully dynamically with your dynamic data. And yeah, I hope that you're going to build a lot of exciting dynamic application and visual use cases for this. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comments. I'm always happy to help. And thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for all your support, for all your wonderful comments and all your for all your wonderful words and your dms i really 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 appreciate that and yeah thank you so much for everything and see you tomorrow bye bye